Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is Donovan and tonight I want to take a second look or a second impressions of this device right here. This is the new mobile G3. It's an absolutely stunning device available at a very budget friendly cost of $200. And at that price point, this thing has a lot to offer. So the reason why I'm calling this a second look is because I actually reviewed this phone quite a while back. So I made three videos on the new mobile G3 back in like March and April of 2018. It's now December of 2018. 2018 and uh, they've come out with a refreshed look and then also some updated software which we'll talk about in just a little bit so uh, the new mobile g3 when it initially launched uh, only came in the color of blue it was a great looking device also a glass back just like you see here um, but it was available in just the blue so now they've also launched it with a red color as you can see here and then the second color is called tiger so notice that when i have it in certain lighting it kind of has that streakiness to it well the quote-unquote tiger color is a brown color that has yellow streaks or orange streaks when you turn it in certain lighting so that's why they call it that tiger color and uh, I haven't seen that one but uh, in video it looks like a very stunning device just like this one here so I absolutely love the red one they gave me the option of picking between the tiger and red and I always will go for red whenever that option is available so a few things to note about this phone. Let's go ahead and run through the specs so new mobile G3 uh, we have an 18 by 9 aspect ratio uh, display here that is a 5.7 inch display at 720p so the resolution isn't great but uh, when you look at it uh, it's really not a bad display at all we have a MediaTek processor clocked at 2.39 gigahertz uh, and that's an octa-core processor it's actually the Helio P23 processor a very popular processor uh, for budget-friendly devices especially ones coming out of China we have a 4G LTE phone this is a dual sim phone and it will work on any GSM network, so AT&T, T-Mobile, Metro PCS, Cricket Wireless, etc., etc. We have four gigs of RAM, so for a phone at the $200 price point, that's pretty uncommon. We also have 64 gigs of internal storage, and you can expand it via micro SD. So. Just a quick heads up, when it comes to this SIM card here, or this SIM tray, we either have dual nano SIM, or we have a micro SD and a nano SIM uh, tray there. So you can do one or the other. We do also have a fingerprint sensor, which I'll go ahead and show you now. Works very fast, so we'll just do that again real quick. One, two, three. And we do also have face unlock, so I'll go ahead and show you that real quick. So let's see if it works. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it on, and look away. So that worked pretty well. So face unlock and also that fingerprint sensor so either way you can unlock it we also have 13 and 5 megapixel cameras on the rear as you can see here so these are real rear dual cameras that's a hard thing to say real rear dual cameras so sometimes with these cheaper phones you get kind of like fake cameras that is not the case here these are legitimate 13 and 5 megapixel cameras so that means you get that portrait mode option with those dual cameras and then also a 13 megapixel camera up here on the front with a flash so very cool so i'm going to go ahead and uh, strip this off all right, so now that we've talked about specs, let's go ahead and take a look around the device. And uh, the looks of the device is definitely one of the selling points. There's no question about that. It has a nice single-handed feel to it. Um, and then that glass back obviously is very, very nice, especially at that $200 price point. You're not going to find a whole lot of phones that look this uh, I'll say fancy. I don't know if that's the right word, but looks this classy, I guess, at this $200 price point. So along the back, we have that new branding. We also have our fingerprint sensor, and we've already talked about those dual cameras, and we also have a dual flash. Along the right-hand side, we have our power button, and uh, notice the power button does have some ridges there, so it's super easy to find. We also have our volume rocker. The buttons have a very nice clicky feel to them. Uh, along the top, we just have our SIM tray, and then we also have our antenna band. So we've already talked a little bit about that that SIM tray. Along the bottom we just have a microphone here. We have Type-C for charging. Thumbs up for that. And yes, it does support fast charging uh, and that's at 2 amps. Um, and then also we have our uh, speaker grill there on the bottom. Along the left hand side, basically nothing. And then looking at the front, uh, so first thing we look at is our display. So again, that fingerprint sensor does work very well and pretty fast as well. Uh, so there is our 720p display. It honestly looks quite nice. Maybe just a very small complaint I have about it is that it doesn't get super dim. Um, but uh, for the sake of contrast here, I had to turn it way, way down. Um, but then if I turn it way up, it does get quite bright. No problem seeing it in the brightest of light. So no issues there in terms of the display. Uh, you can see 
has some pretty good viewing angles. It does get a little bit dimmer as you turn it, uh, but that's pretty common uh, for a phone, regardless of the price point. Um, so. Anyways, that's just a quick look around the phone. Let's go ahead and take a look at what you get with it. So one of the things included with it is this thin TPU case. So that's great that you don't have to go out and buy one if you don't want to um, because it does come with one, but it is just kind of be aware of the fact that this is a very thin TPU. It's also a glass back phone. So just something to keep in mind. We do have a type C cable here for charging it because of course it does support type C. Now, unfortunately you probably noticed that there's no headphone jack. So it comes with a dot dongle there. Uh, so while it doesn't come with the headphone jack, at least it comes with the dongle so you can plug in some headphones. We also have our two amp adapter for charging it up and then we have a SIM removal card and then we have our box of course as well. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about is the performance on the new Mobile G3. So to do that, I wanted to go ahead and compare it up against some other phones with some very similar price points, um, but all with different processors. So we're going to go ahead and run through these. You can see the scores here, so I'm not going to really talk about the scores a whole lot. But the higher the score in terms of Geekbench 4 scores, typically the better the performance you're going to see. Um, so you can see that there is a single core score and then also a multi-core score. Um, so we'll talk about that in just a little bit. Um, but over here, this is the Z. ZTE Blade Max View. So this one's running the Snapdragon 435 processor with three gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of internal storage. So you can see our multi-core score is definitely the lowest out of these. Now that's a $200 phone, that's the regular price. Uh, then the new mobile G3, again, that's also a $200 phone. That's the Helio P23 processor, that's a MediaTek octa-core processor. And uh, of course our multi-core score of 3162, four gigs of RAM, as I already mentioned there. Over here, this is the Samsung Galaxy A6, this one has 3 gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of internal storage. This one's running a Samsung Exynos processor. So Samsung has their own line of processors. This one happens to be running one of their middle of the line processors. And uh, you can see here that this one actually is the second highest when it comes to multi-core score. Uh, but then over here, the new Mobile G3 actually has a higher single core score. And then last but not least, we have the Xiaomi Mi A2 Lite, which when it comes to performance, this one clearly outperforms these other ones. Uh, this one's running the Snapdragon 6 25 processor so this one has a single core score and a multi-core score that outperforms these other three phones and you can notice that um, as you're using the device you definitely notice that this one is noticeably faster when it comes to gaming and things like that but all these phones are great middle of the line phones i really don't have one that i think is drastically better than any of the others. They're all great options. Uh, this one, the Samsung Galaxy A6, I think the regular price is actually $400, but if you get the internationally unlocked version, you can get it for a little over 200. So really it kind of falls into the similar price points of these other phones. But if you're looking for just pure performance, obviously the Mi A2 Lite is the best one to go with out of these four phones, um, but that's obviously not the only consideration you wanna make when you're purchasing a phone. All right, so now it's time to talk about the cameras on the new Mobile G3. And again, this is not an area that's been refreshed. We still have the same 13 and 5 megapixel camera on the rear and 13 megapixel camera up front. Now, notice that I have these other phones here, and that's because I just want to mention uh, that these other phones, uh, you can see here the ZTE and the Xiaomi phones both have that dual camera set up just like what we get here. Um, but then over here on the Samsung phone, we only have a single camera, and that's a 16 megapixel camera. Um, so this one, again, has 13 and 13 megapixel cameras and then also that five megapixel camera when I go into the actual camera app you can see that uh, because we have that dual camera set up we have this portrait mode so that's what we're showing down here and with that portrait mode we can adjust the focal length so it's kind of funny because whoops I just clicked off of it um, but uh, Apple actually talked about how like they were one of the first phones to offer this uh, you can adjust the focal length in real time so if you're unfamiliar with focal length basically the lower that focal length number is the more everything in the background is going to get blurred out when you take the picture and everything in the foreground uh, is in focus whereas if you move it way down here into like the f11 um, that's actually going to basically make everything be in focus whether it's in the foreground or the background so that's just something quick about the portrait mode uh, it works quite well pretty much on par with these other two phones nothing amazing um, but it's nice that it offers it we also, of course, uh, with the photo mode, we have HDR, um, and then we have over here, we have beauty mode. Um, I didn't mention here that with video, uh, maybe one slight negative is that there is no any kind of image stabilization, um, but we do shoot in 1080p there. 
Um, and then over here we have a beauty mode. We also have a pan mode. We also have mono. Basically that's just going to be black and white. And then we also have our pro mode. So we can adjust our white balance, our ISO, and then we can also change it to auto white balance and uh, brightness there. So anyways, just a quick look at the cameras. Again, nothing amazing, nothing to write home about when it comes to the cameras, but also uh, for $200, it's really right along uh, on par with these other phones at that price point when it comes to the cameras, which is to say it's good enough, but nothing amazing. All right, so now it's time to talk about the cameras on the new mobile G3. And again, this is not an area that's been refreshed. We still have the same 13 and five megapixel camera on the rear and 13 megapixel camera up front. Now notice that I have these other phones here and that's because I just want to mention uh, that these other phones, uh, you can see here the ZTE and the Xiaomi phones both have that dual camera set up just like what we get here. Um, but then over here on the Samsung phone, we only have a single camera and that's a 16 megapixel camera. Um, so this one again has 13 and 13 megapixel cameras and then also that five megapixel camera when I go into the actual camera app you can see that uh, because we have that dual camera set up we have this portrait mode so that's what we're showing down here and with that portrait mode we can adjust the focal length so it's kind of funny because whoops I just clicked off of it um, but uh, Apple actually talked about how like they were one of the first phones to offer this uh, you can adjust the focal length in real time so if you're unfamiliar with focal length basically the lower that focal length number is the more more everything in the background is going to get blurred out when you take the picture and everything in the foreground uh, is in focus whereas if you move it way down here into like the f11 um, that's actually going to basically make everything be in focus whether it's in the foreground or the background so that's just something quick about the portrait mode uh, it works quite well pretty much on par with these other two phones nothing amazing um, but it's nice that it offers it we also, of course, uh, with the photo mode, we have HDR, um, and then we have over here, we have beauty mode. Um, I didn't mention here that with video, uh, maybe one slight negative is that there is no any kind of image stabilization, um, but we do shoot in 1080p there. Um, and then over here, we have a beauty mode. We also have a pan mode. We also have mono. Basically, that's just going to be black and white. And then we also have our pro mode, so we can adjust our white balance, our ISO, and then we can also change it to auto white balance and uh, brightness there. So anyways, just a quick look at the cameras. Again, nothing amazing, nothing to write home about when it comes to the cameras, but also uh, for $200, it's really right along uh, on par with these other phones at that price point when it comes to the cameras, which is to say it's good enough, but nothing amazing. All right, so before I conclude this, I just want to mention one other last thing, and that is the battery life on this phone. So uh, while I have not tested this phone out enough, this newer version of it out enough to know for certain that it's the same, uh, we have a 3000 mAh hour battery, which for me, with the original G3 that I had, I was getting about five hours of screen on time. Now, I will say that at $200 price point, these two phones, this is the Xiaomi Mi A2 Lite, and then also this Blade Max View, those two have, I think, 4000 mAh hour battery, so definitely better battery life that you're going to get out of those uh, upwards of 10 hours eight hours of screen on time with those two phones the a6 is more in line with what you're going to get with uh, the new mobile g3 in terms of battery life maybe just slightly better in fact it actually is better i was getting more like six or seven hours of screen on time so in terms of battery life this one uh, definitely has the lowest out of these four that i mentioned uh, but uh, overall this phone really is a pretty compelling phone so while it may not have anything that is uh, necessarily groundbreaking about it. I will say that probably the number one selling point of this phone is the design. It definitely, out of these four phones, no question asked, this one is definitely the most beautiful of those phones. Um, but then also just in general, there's no major negatives about it. It has a lot to offer, 64 gigs of internal storage. So you're not gonna really run out of storage real fast. Um, also, you can of course expand it via micro SD. Uh, it's gonna work on all the GSM networks. So uh, really awesome phone phone at this price point. So still definitely one worth considering, uh, especially now that it has updated software and then also the fact that it has these newer refreshed colors. So uh, definitely check it out in the links down below. New G3 available right now on amazon.com for $200. Thanks for watching. I hope this video has been helpful for you and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.